Well, again, St. John's family and friends, this is Pastor Brady, and this is our online Sunday school time together for February 21st, 2021. Well, today we celebrate the first Sunday in the Lenten season. We begin our journey to Calvary. And as we look to the Word of God today during our Sunday school time, uh, we will be hearing about a journey. We'll be hearing about the Psalms and how Psalms were used along the journey to get somewhere. Are you, are you on a journey today? Well, we all are on a journey, our life journey, but sometimes we're going in different directions. And today, if you feel like you're going in the wrong direction, if you feel uncertain, if you feel scared, by what's out there in the world, it's time to get on a journey with Jesus Christ. It's time to be led by him. You know, we're going to be saying throughout Lent here at St. John's that we are on the road, on the journey to Calvary, as we work our way to Good Friday and to Easter Sunday and the resurrection. So this is a, as good a time as any, and, and maybe you're stuck at home because of the pandemic. You can't get out to church. You can't get to Bible study. You can't get to Sunday school. You can still speak to God. You can still let the Spirit into your heart and get right with the Lord today. So if you're joining us for the first time, we've been studying the books of Psalm, of the Psalms, going throughout the Psalms, not in order, kind of skipping around. Um, but each week we look at a Psalm, uh, we, we read the Scripture, we, we look a little deeper into that Scripture. If you'd like to join us for in-person Sunday school, that is being held socially distanced um, in our gathering room, the center room of our building. And that begins at 9 a.m. each Sunday. Each Sunday, this online offering streams around 9.20 a.m. And I invite you to join us at 10.30 a.m. Uh, for our worship service. And that will be streamed live on Facebook and then later posted to our YouTube page and sent out via our email link. You can just go to YouTube and subscribe to St. John's UCC of Bedford if you'd like to. Uh, you can like us on Facebook so you can see when the services are happening. And you can also um, call into the office and get on that email link as we send out prayers, concerns, church announcements, devotions, all kinds of stuff throughout the week. So we can still stay connected until the day when we can all come together again. So today, brothers and sisters, we look at Psalm 120. And as I say each week, it's good to have a good study Bible that has the context. If you don't have one, get one. Um, it's so important when we read the Word to keep going back to the Word, to know where the Word came from, to know the authorship, the time period, and the purpose of God's Word. So get that good study Bible. If you have one before you now, go to the 120th Psalm, and that's going to be our lesson today. Last week, uh, in Psalm 115, I believe, or actually 118, um, you know, if we look back to that psalm, it was pretty long. Psalm 118 was last week's lesson, and, and it was about the confidence in God's love. It was appropriate for Valentine's Day. Today, our psalm's theme is about a little bit of deliverance along the journey and how God can give that deliverance, about how the world's going to attack you, even if you're trying to be a peacemaker, but God can hold you up and guide you through this warring world and through all those that are out there to get you, those that are enabled by sin and evil, those that don't have God in their lives, those that are tempted by Satan as we all are at times. It's kind of appropriate we look at this for the journey because we also talk about Jesus going into the wilderness this Sunday and, and being tempted after he was, he was baptized and then tempted and then went on his mission, his life's mission. As we know, when Jesus went into the wilderness, he was able to turn away the devil. And I say to you today, so are we with the power of God. So let's look to the 120th Psalm. In my Bible, the theme of the 120th Psalm, it says, is a prayer for deliverance from false accusers. It says, all believers must live with the tension of being in the world, but not belonging to it. So it's a prayer for deliverance from those that falsely accuse you, those that attack you wrongly. And it also says we have to live in this tension of being in a world that we live in, but we're not really belong to it. What does that mean? That means if you give your life to Jesus Christ, you belong to him. But that doesn't mean that you don't still have to live in this world. 
because we all know there's lots of tension in our world right now. There always is some. It's been a tense 2020 and beginning of 2021. The virus is so prevalent. There's vaccines that are happening. Some people are getting, some can't. There's just so many things going on. So many trouble we see when we turn on, so much trouble we see when we turn on the news programs. There's a lot of tension in our world and not as much peace and understanding as there needs to be. But who has all peace and understanding? Our Lord and Savior, our God. Go to Him, pray to Him, have Him as part of your life because you do not belong to this world. You belong to God. The authorship of today's psalm. It says the author is anonymous, but some attribute it to Hezekiah. So let us uh, read this 120th psalm. It says it's a song of ascents. And I said that, that this was a psalm or a song that was used for the journey. And what does that mean? Well, when they were on the way to the temple for special festivals such as this Passover, uh, they would have these kind of prayers, and it's part of the Song of Ascents, which is actually the 120th to the 134th Psalm, they're these songs of ascents, songs for the journey as they went to these feasts. We can call them pilgrim songs as you travel that journey. We're on a journey now, so we're looking at a psalm that teaches us that God delivers us from the ways of this world. So let's read this Song of Ascents, Psalm 120. I call on the Lord in my distress, and he answers me. Save me, O Lord, from lying lips and from deceitful tongues. What will he do to you, and what more besides a deceitful tongue? He will punish you with a warrior's sharp arrows, with burning coals of the broom tree. Woe to me that I dwell in Mishak that I live among the tents of Kedar. Too long have I lived among those who hate peace. I am a man of peace, but when I speak, they are for war. May God bless the reading of his holy word on this day. But what do we see in this psalm? We see someone that is trying to get to a place of peace. We see someone that is in distress because those around him are at war, and that's what they want. He's a man of peace. He seeks peace. And that those around him are filled with deceitful tongues, it says. With lying words upon their lips. Maybe you face this. Maybe you've been falsely accused. Maybe you just notice it seems to be the way the world is. We seem to be in a shock culture where... Finding out information as quickly as possible is more important than whether that information is true. We seem to live in a gossip culture. You know, it, it, it's on television, gossip on television, on our Facebook feeds. Gossip exists in our communities. You know, even in close-knit small towns, I mean, the gossip goes wild. And there is so much lying, so much overblowing a story that you hear. So much deceitful words. These are not the ways of our Lord. Man, we are so often prone to doing it. And sometimes it seems like we want to tear one another down. Just maybe make ourselves feel better. To build ourselves up a little bit. We seem to be a world that's at war. Maybe the tanks aren't rolling into town. But boy, the hurt is rolling into town. For a lot of people. And a lot of people, that's the reason they don't maybe go to church, because they're too worried about what other people think, or they're too worried about what someone else might say. But that's really no reason to go to church. But I understand people are hurtful, you know, so why go to where you might feel hurt? But we must focus on what is truly important. When we think to not go to church or to a Bible study or even a gathering of friends, because we might get hurt, we have to remember that God is with us. He heals us. He sees us through the hurt. He knows who we are, and we belong to him. They may be speaking warring words, but he's the God of peace. And you can be a person of peace, and a person of love, and a person of perseverance. 
you know, you don't come to church, while it is a place to fellowship and to have that communion and to love one another, you don't come to church for those people. You come to church to worship and praise your God. And your God is not a worrying God. He's a loving God. He's not a God full of deceit, but he's full of an everlasting promise and covenant. And that is filled with love and hope for your life. Let's go back to the word. Our scripture today begins by saying, I call on the Lord in my distress, and he answers me. Well, I think a lot of people could maybe say this, or say, yes, I believe it, but then they have their doubts, because sometimes we pray to God, and we know what we want to happen. In fact, that's probably more often than not when we pray or go to God even if we say, thy will be done, we're thinking in our head, what is my will? What do I want done? What do I want to happen? And then when it doesn't happen, maybe we think, wow, God, I don't have a good connection with God, or God has forgotten me, or, or maybe he isn't really listening. You know, we, we get these kind of doubts and thoughts and fears that pop into our head. But the truth is, it is God's will. And he will lead you through, even if you still see more darkness. Even if you still see more trouble and more tension and more division, he's going to get you through. You have to let his will be done in your life. Because just as the psalmist writes, I call on the Lord in my distress and he answers me. But we have to remember those answers come by the righteousness of our God. His righteous will. Not by our wants or what we want to happen. Verse 2 says, Save me, O Lord, from lying lips and deceitful tongues. I think we should pray this each day. Save me from the lies and the deceit that they don't bring me down. And, Lord, don't allow lies and deceit to come from my lips. You know, it's not just about what our brother and sister may do to us. It's about what we might think about them, how we might judge them, how we might attack them. We need to be peacemakers. We need to share the Lord's love. We need to be reaching out to our brothers and sisters and spreading the true message of Jesus. In verse 3, what will he do to you? And what more besides a dis oh, deceitful tongue? He will punish you with a warrior's sharp arrows with burning coals of the broom tree. Well, that's, that's pretty, pretty powerful right there. Let's not be deceitful and that's, let's not lie because good things don't happen. Even if you think your lies and your deceit and your gossip are building you up, that you're getting ready to be brought down. And your God certainly can bring you down. Verse 5. Woe to me that I dwell in Meshach, that I live among the tents of Kedar. What did this mean, woe to me? Well, those were two places that were pretty warring. They were, one was to the north, I believe one was to the south. Uh, um, of Judea, and they were places that were constantly at war. And the, and the author says, woe to me, you know, that I dwell, that I live in this Meshach, and that, I, that I've gone to these tents of Kedar. Because they're places that are warring. And he doesn't want that. He wants peace. Or we could say, woe to me that I live in this whatever town, USA, in 2021, right? Because yes, we're the freest, most powerful country in the world, but we're still at war with each other. Our politics we're at war with, the way we judge each other, the way we look unkindly at one another, the way we fear and have suspicion of one another, we're still at war with each other in every town, sometimes in many homes. We are still at war, and we need to find that peace and that relief, and that only comes through following Jesus. And then in verse 6 and 7, Too long have I lived among those who hate peace. I am a man of peace, but when I speak, they are for war. I am a man of peace, but when they speak, they are at war. It's a short psalm before it gets to the point. You know, it lifts up to God. He's the one that can live, deliver us in our tension and our distress. And we need to take two things from this along our journey to Calvary and our journey in life today. 
we need to be men and women of peace, even when those around us are warring. Don't join in the war. Let God fight your battles for you. Lay everything at the altar. Let him into your heart. Live by the Spirit. Be filled with the gifts of God. And most of all, love thy neighbor. And love thy enemy. Even those that speak deceit and lies. Over, you know, overflowing love will conquer that hate. Only love will change them. And only love can change you. If you are practicing deceit and lies right now, only God's love can change you. You've got to get that into your heart and into your life. Because yes, the woe to us, we live in a warring, hateful world. But we don't belong to this world. We belong to Jesus Christ, our resurrected Lord. We belong to the Father that loves us as an everlasting love. We belong to the spirit of power and truth that lives within us if we just believe. Brothers and sisters, that's what we're called to. Now today, I hope that you're going to be a person of peace, that you're going to allow God to guide you each step on your journey. Let us pray. Father God, we pray for our church family, our friends, our community, our country, our world. May more turn to you with repentant hearts in this Lenten season. May we join in a journey with you each day of our lives. And in our distress and in the tension of this world, may we look to you for relief. For you are the great Lord of the peace and the Lord of love. Be with us today and worship, Lord. Be with us on our Lenten journey. In Jesus' holy name, amen. I hope you'll join in for worship with us at 1030 um, this morning. And then on Wednesday for our uh, special service at 6 o'clock, um, tune in live or join us in person in the sanctuary for our midweek Lenten meditation services. I hope you all have a wonderful Sunday. May God bless you.